This is a North Island aerodrome, and four flights from squadrons of the Air Training Corps are here on a day's visit. These are boys of 16 and a half to 18 years of age who intend to enter the Air Force later on. The instruments they have studied are now being demonstrated to them installed in a plane. And here's a party of them looking into one of the reconnaissance machines which keep watch round our shores. In special courses, these cadets have learnt about such things as the speed of falling bodies. Here they see how to strap on a parachute, which will let a man fall through the air no faster than a falling ant or spider. The pilot officer explains how the jolt when the parachute opens is distributed over the body. Once on the ground, a quick release system lets the airman slip out of the harness and avoid being dragged by the wind. These boys are preparing to enter an Air Force which sets a high educational standard. The Air Training Corps is helping ever-increasing numbers to reach that standard and helping them also to get practical acquaintance with such things as aeroplane engines. Air Training Corps for boys like these exist in the main centers some provincial towns, and also as sections of school cadet units. They can in the future become Air Force tradesmen or air crews, according to their special abilities. And when they do come to the Air Force, they will have a good grounding in Air Force and general subjects. Now the day's visit is over, and truck by truck, the flights return home. A familiar sight in Wellington streets today is the telegraph girl stepping out in place of a telegraph boy. With hundreds of boys leaving the service to wear khaki, the post office has found girls to don neat blue uniforms and carry on. The work begins in the telegram dispatch room of the post office, where the war has brought more work than ever. Every minute telegrams pour in to be dealt with, a continual stream, and every telegram must be stamped, checked, folded, and put into an envelope. This is a line of work that must be done efficiently and speedily. And at the end of the line enters the telegraph girl, ready to walk many miles, the last link between the post office and the public. It looks easy enough, but there's more than a pleasant walk ahead. There are often obscure streets or strange buildings that must be first located on a map. There's no waiting. As quickly as telegrams arrive, there are girls to receive them. As one girl eagerly departs, another returns. Out into the street and the walk begins. There's no time to gaze in windows. For the postman and the telegraph girl, there are busy streets to be crossed, hard pavements to be walked, in sunshine, wind or in rain. The public must be served. This often means, for the telegraph girl, steep steps and hills to be climbed, miles a day to be walked, tiring work at any time, and it calls for more than stout shoes. Delivering a telegram may be commonplace, but this is more than just the telegraph girl. She is part of a service which the public expects to carry on, and it is carrying on. This girl is one among many who are releasing men for a bigger job. <laughs> 